Hi guys, in today's tutorial we're going to be making Agnes from Despicable Me. Because she's a 3D cake, we're going to need a little bit of support inside, which you can make your own or you can pre-buy one. So I've bought this one here and I'll put links to everything I've used below. We're going to make it part in cake and part in Rice Krispie treats. So I've melted some marshmallows and we're going to just add some Rice Krispies. Again, I'll just put the recipe to this in the description box below the video. Keep adding marshmallows until it's as thick as you like. Now, I forgot to just add a bit of marshmallow to the underside of my support structure. So if you add your marshmallow before you've added Rice Krispies, this helps. And then once you've done that, you can pack in your Rice Krispie mix nice and tight around this. Uh, I've got this upside down, so this is the top half of my stand. So it's six inches, it's the six inch disc that we're using and we're putting underneath there like that. That's going to become the underside of her head. Now they're quite messy of the Rice Krispies treats and you might even want to put it in the fridge for 10 minutes to harden. So while that's setting, we're going to make her some feet. Again, we're going to use Rice Krispie treats for the feet, but you can use cake if you prefer. So we're going to go with a bit of a teardrop kind of shape. We want to flatten it so it's flat the soles and nice and rounded at the top, narrower at the ankle. So once that's had time to firm up, I'm going to put a chocolate ganache over the surface just to try and even it off a little bit. So I've used a white chocolate ganache and I'm covering the bottom of the face, or what will become the face, and also I'm going to cover the entire shoe. So I've put the shoes on greaseproof paper, just so they don't stick. Once they're set, we're going to cover these in white fondant, and I'm going to cut all the way around the edge of that, taking off the extra. So that's the top of our shoe covered. So let's put some decoration on the top of her foot. We're going to cut a couple of little strips, one for each foot, like the little Velcro tab bit that goes across the top. I'm going to stick that in place, then we're just going to put a little marking on there, a little sort of semicircle underneath that, a couple of lines above. You're not going to see a lot of the top of the foot when we stick it on. And I'm going to place this on another piece of white fondant that we've rolled out reasonably thin, which will become the sole of the shoe. And you don't want to press too hard when you're doing this bit because you don't want your fingers to imprint into the front. I'm just using a bowling tool to create a bit of patterning on the sole of her foot. So we're going to put a couple of circles in draw a ring around them and then we're going to put some lines in. I've just got a cake dowel to hand so I'm just going to use this for putting the lines in. So we want a long strip now of fondant so cut it so it's nice and even and it has to be long enough that it's going to wrap around the foot itself or the shoe. So we're going to wrap that all the way around the bottom, seal it at the back and I'm actually just going to leave them upside down to dry but we're just going to add some light blue stripes. I've got my fondant ready coloured, you can dye it if you prefer. And we're just going to roll out some strips and put a couple down each side on the shoes. Do the same for both shoes. We'll put these to one side while we go back to work on the cake itself. So you can use whatever flavour cake you want. I've baked a ginger cake for this one. And I've baked them six inches wide. And I'm going to push those onto my cake frame. So this is the base of my cake frame. Just so that I know whereabouts I need to put the holes. And then I've just got a cake dowel to push in holes so that they slot nicely onto my plastic frame. So can you see the holes are closer to the front than they are to the back? And I'm going to put some buttercream in between, slot on our next tier, or our next layer. So I've added another layer of buttercream, and then what I'm going to do is push the top of my cake frame into that bottom bit. So can you see the fit together there? And then we'll put the rest of the cake on with this built together. Now the next layer of cake I want to slot either side and put the holes in as you would before. Now I've added a little bit of chocolate ganache in the middle just to try and keep everything nice and firm in the middle. And I'm just going to keep wedging cake in until I can't get any more under the head. And now I've got another six inch cake that we've cut in half. And then we're going to cut these halves into quarters. These are going to become the tops of our legs. Then off each quarter I've just cut a small slither where they're going to push against the cake so this will be the tops of the legs against the body then we want to carve this out a little bit more so that we start to give us some shape we're going to carve the body so it comes from the neck down a curve at the front I want to remove like a long thin triangle which will be the part in between her arms and then I'm just widening this triangle now I've put it in carefully you don't lose too much cake it's because my cake's quite soft it's wanting to drop to pieces a little bit so we'll make sure we stick that back in place in a minute just going to take a little bit off the ends of each of her legs. So that's my basic shape. And I'm going to cover this now in a white chocolate ganache. Now you can use buttercream, but because the cake's quite heavy, it will sink a little bit. So I'm going to use ganache because it's got a lot more strength on it. So I'm going to fully cover all that bottom section. She looks a little bit like a frog at the moment. Then once we've covered the bottom section, we're going to add cake now 
for the rest of our head. So again, I've got another six inch cake. You could do a seven inch cake for the head as I actually have to bulk it out a little bit more shortly. And on top of that, we've got a dome shaped cake. So I've got a six inch dome and we've cut the six inch dome and we're just sticking that on with a bit of buttercream. And what I'm gonna do is where I want the face to be a little bit bigger, I'm gonna add like a cake pop mix. So I've got my leftover cake crumbs from earlier that we've cut off the cakes and I've just mixed them with a little bit of buttercream so that we get like a, almost like a dough. And we're pressing these on the face around sort of the middle area where I want it to be a little bit wider for her cheeks. And then what I'm gonna do is again cover it in a layer of ganache. So I'm gonna do it quite thin at first, then I'll let it set and I'll go over it again. Once it's set, I want to mark in where her facial features go. So I've put a line across where the bottom of the eyes are gonna go and then I've put a line down the middle of the face just so I know where the center is. And we're gonna cut out a bit of a curve for each eye. So just make sure you put them the same distance apart from that center piece. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit more chocolate ganache in those eye sockets. Don't put so much in that they go back to the shape they were before you've cut out the cake. I've just dyed a pale skin tone color in fondant and we've put a little semicircle just under her chin against the top part of her body now. I've put a tiny bit of water onto the chocolate ganache to stick this. And now near the bottom of her face, we're cutting out a little hole which will become her mouth. I've got more of my pale skin tone and we've rolled a much larger piece of fondant now that we're gonna push onto the face. And you can see where I haven't smoothed the ganache out quite enough there around the cheeks. So spend a little bit longer than I have done getting the surface underneath nice and smooth. Just give it a gentle rub with the palm of your hands gonna cut about halfway around the head because this is where a hairline is going to come to and I'm gonna before it has time to start drying we're gonna work on that mouth a little bit just trying to smooth out the icing inside or the fondant and pull it down a little bit so she looks like she's got a bottom lip and we want an oval shape for the nose so we're gonna push that on I've just flattened it slightly at the bottom when I've pushed it on and then using my Dresden tool we're just poking a little hole under each side for the nostrils now for the eyes, it's not quite a circle. We want a big eye hole, a big mark where the eye's gonna go, which I'm just dinting in with my modeling tool. And then we're gonna put eyes in. So the eyes are just white fondant. I've used a circle cutter that's about the same size as those marks I've made on the face. And then I'm gonna trim a small amount off the bottom just to change the shape of that circle. Just round off the edges a little bit with your finger. And then we're gonna push that into that eye socket that you've made. Put a little bit of water or edible glue just to stick it in place. Now we've got yellow fondant. I've cut a little bit of a curve in it. I haven't worked too much on getting an exact shape. It's just a strip because I'm going to cut a lot of this off. It's just going to cover the front part of where her t-shirt will be. So I'm going to trim this just above where the arms will go because the dungarees are going to come and cover all the seams of this t-shirt. I've just put a little line around the collar so it looks more like a neckline. And another strip around the back in yellow. Don't worry if it doesn't meet at the front with the yellow because her sleeves and dungarees are going to cover it. This time we've got blue and we're putting a piece in between her arms and I've tried to fold it as I've put it in so if it crinkles it's probably a good thing because it's going to look like it's fabricy and it's got a bit more movement to it. And then we'll use a stitching tool around the top and down the middle just to put some little lines in. You don't have to do this bit. And then some more pale blue to roll around the bottom. So this has got to be long enough that it goes round the back and it's going to come and cover the tops of those legs that we stuck on in cake. And let's put some little crease lines in. So above the top of the leg, and can you see in the middle below the leg? So that will then look like the leg is bending and that's the underneath of what would be her knee. Cut it all along the bottom. And we want another panel on the back. Put some more creases in, just using the back of like a Dresden tool. Or you can use the paintbrush handle. Let's put some more stitching lines on there brown strips this time to put some stripes on the t-shirt. Do this front and back, cut off all the edges. This time we've got more flesh colour for our arm. Now I've kept this quite thick for the arm. You can go a little bit thinner if you want because it's quite a lot of fondant. We'll do that on the other arm. And we want almost a bit of a semicircle, slightly longer than a semicircle in the yellow for a sleeve. Again I've left it quite thick so you might find when you're eating the cake that you do want to take off a little bit of the fondant couple of creases and then we'll add our brown stripes again. For the dungarees we need some blue. Again we're going to roll some strips and these are just going to go from the back of the dungarees round to the front. 
try to get them into a point as they come to the front so they look like they're folded and creased just under her arms. You can add stitching lines again and a couple of creases. And she's got buttons on there, but they're kind of partially covered. So I'll just do a half button or a semicircle in red and we'll try and squeeze that under her shoulder. Then we want to add her shoes. Now I've used some royal icing. I've put quite a large amount at the end of the leg. I'm going to push the shoe on. I've then rested it against something so that till it sets, it's going to stay in shape. We want some turn ups on her trousers. So just a piece of blue fondant again some crease lines across the middle. Now for a hair, we've got black fondant. Now I've rolled this quite thin as I probably didn't get quite enough black fondant. <laughs> so if I were doing it again, I'd use a little bit more black fondant than I have here. Make sure it's stuck on nice and tight. I've got a few creases. I'll try my best to push those out. Trim off any extra with scissors or a knife. And it wants to really meet the seam of the flesh color at the front of the face. I'm gonna mark whereabouts I want her fringe to come to. And I've got a slightly thicker piece now of black that we're going to put over the front of the head, bringing the straight edge of it along that line that I've just marked. And then we're going to add hairlines. So I've just used my Dresden tool or veining tool just from the top and bottom to add in hair so it looks a bit more like a fringe. Ears, we've got an oval of our skin tone. I've just used the handle of my knife to put a dint in the middle, sliced a little bit off the edge, and then we're going to push that in place so that it's a little bit lower down than her eyes, just in front of that hairline. Then we're going to add a strip of black just in front of that ear. It's going to cover our join and look like some little pieces of hair falling in front of her ear. Then we want to add some lines into the back of her hair as well. Now I've actually just put an extra little piece of black on here just to give it a bit more height. And I've got a cake dowel that's going to go into the back of her head, keeping it upright because this is what we're going to put her ponytail on. And I've got some more black. This time I'm using flour and modeling paste rather than fondant. Just rolled it out and we're putting some lines across. I've just done this quite quickly. You can spend a bit longer on it. Cut little bits from the edge with the knife. So it looks a bit more hair like at the ends. And I'm just going to wrap a piece of this modeling paste. Not the piece we've just cut into but just a plain piece. Just around this cake dowel. And I'm trimming just the ends so it looks a bit more hair like at the end. Then what I'm going to do is that piece we've just done, we're going to wrap it around the ponytail. So it should cling on to that piece we've just put on. I can do a bit more trimming around the top of it in a minute. Just make sure it doesn't flop down too much and then just keep trimming the ends so it looks a bit more hair-like. If it's a bit chunky, give it a bit more of a squeeze to thin it out and you can always trim any extra off the back if needed. Then I've got some red fondant rolled into a bit of a sausage shape. We're just putting some dints in. Again, so it looks like it's a bit ruched. And this is going to become her bobble, her hair bobble or hair scrunchie. And I'm just going to deepen those lines. And we're going to paint on some eyebrows now. I've just got dark brown food colouring. Now, I don't want them to look too solid, so I'm going to try and paint some little lines on over the top. And I've done it so it's half disappeared under the eyebrow. And then I've just scraped a little bit of that off with my modelling tool so it looks a bit hairier in the middle. Do the same for the other one. And I've got quite a pale brown now. It's actually a chestnut brown that we've cut out with circle for for each eye. So quite large circles. Then a smaller circle in black fondant. Just stick that in the middle of each one. Then we'll add a bit more detail. So I've just got that chestnut food colouring that I used for dyeing the fondant. And we're painting that on now. I'm going to paint it around the edge. And then we want to try and blend it in a little bit. So just with a damp brush, go over your food colouring. If you want it darker, use the food colouring a little bit more concentrated. I'll put links below to the food colours and everything that I've used in the video. A little ball of white just in the corner of that eye, so it looks like a bit of light reflecting in her eye. And then we're going to go over the edge of the eye, just with a thin paintbrush in black. If you prefer, you can use an edible pen, you don't have to paint it. And repeat on the other eye. And then we've just got some edible dust. So I've got a dark brown here that I'm just dusting lightly into the mouth, just so it looks a little bit darker. And then a bit of a peachy colour just on the edge of her lip. Give her a bit of blusher. We've just got a bit of pink in the edible dust and use quite a large soft brush. Keep it dry to dust onto the cheeks. You can put a little bit on her nose and her forehead if you like. For the hands, I've got two pieces of the skin tone. I've just kind of squashed them into a rough round shape, but they're a little bit squished. And we're going to cut out a triangle off the far side of each one for the thumb. And then I'm going to put one, two, three more cuts, which will make our fingers. Just round off the edges of those cut lines so they look a bit more finger-like. 
And what we're going to do is just push that onto the cake board just at the bottom of each wrist. Mine are quite squeezed in together so the hands are just going to overlap a little bit. There she is, all finished. Now people do tend to ask me how long these cakes take to make. Because this particular one seems quite quick in the video but in actual time I took two full days to create this little cake. But I think she was worth it and hopefully you guys will enjoy the tutorial. Let me know in the comments below which other characters you'd like to see me make. And don't forget to check out my other Despicable Me tutorials. Thank you for watching. If you like the video be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.